60 minutes overtime. One of the most surprising things about this war is witnessing the human capacity to keep things as normal as they possibly can and keep things as normal as they can until the very last second. We want to live in Ukraine and nothing uh, will change this, you see? So nothing. You heard that, right? Yes. It's as if nothing happened. You nothing. don't shake, you don't even turn your head. No. You got used to it. Yes. We have got used to this, all this. I'm Erin Lyle and I'm a producer for CBS News. I'm Holly Williams. I'm a foreign correspondent for CBS News. And this week I am in Kherson, Ukraine with Erin Lyle reporting on this city that spent uh, over eight months being occupied by Russian forces. We're not recording this in Kherson. We're actually in Mykolaiv, which is about 90 minutes drive outside Kherson because this is the first spot and the closest drive where there is reliable power and water and heat. And when you're shooting in February, those things matter quite a bit. And Kherson has been getting uh, anywhere from about a dozen to a hundred uh, pieces of munitions falling in the city every day. So we figured it'd be better to go in and out every day to avoid unnecessary danger. Aaron and I have been reporting together from Ukraine for nine years now. 2014 was, uh, was a crazy year in Ukraine. We started in Kyiv uh, for the protests. The protesters are in control of the center of Kyiv. We, we drove to Kyiv. Crimea. I was in Crimea when the little green men showed up who were actual Russian forces. <laughs> and then we were both in the Donbass when Russian-backed separatists decided to take over swaths of territory around Donetsk. And they were little green men because they were Russian forces who didn't want to be identified as Russian soldiers. Right, they soldiers. had removed all the uh, insignias from their uniforms and just popped up saying they were there to protect the people who live there. Can you tell me, are you Ukrainian or are you Russian? I'm just a person. You're just a person? Yes. You won't tell me? No. It's a classic kind of Vladimir Putin move, which is this element of deniability. Yeah, it's not us. We're not going to invade. We're not going to start a war. It's not happening. And then, oh, but we're doing something completely different. Ukraine, for its part, is saying that this is a full-scale invasion and there are grave fears that this could end up being the biggest land war in Europe since World War II. This war has generally been an interesting mix of uh, normal conditions and extraordinary moments. It looks as though this, this area is still getting shelled by the Russians. <laughs> So the Ukrainians are saying that there is a drone overhead. We've generally had places to stay and electricity to work with and heat to keep us warm. But there are moments where we have to put our creative hats on and figure out how we can do those things. One time when things got out of control was uh, in May. I was covering the Ukrainian offensive to take Kherson back. And we wanted to go to a recently liberated village on the way to Kherson. And so the military told us they would take us. And unfortunately, we got spotted by some Russian tanks. And then took artillery for two hours and had to hide under a tree. Getting closer. We're getting closer. We need to move. Had to run into a root cellar. Oh. Careful, careful. And listen to these bangs as they got closer and closer and closer. It was supposed to be a day in flak jackets and helmets, but walking around a village speaking to people who had survived something. And instead, it became a situation where I was sitting in a root cellar wondering if I was going to come out. Um, it wasn't a great day. One gift about being a journalist in this war has been we've had the opportunity to meet the most amazing people. And when I came through here uh, a couple days after Kherson was liberated, we had to spend a night in one of the little villages just outside the city borders because they had shut down the city. And this couple took in our team. There were seven of us. They put out, I think, all the food they had in the world, you know, boiled pasta, 10 jars of pickles, homemade moonshine. <laughs> they made seven beds in one room. 
Uh, everything they had, they shared. They were so happy to have their, their city liberated. And they could tell us, relieve all of the trauma of the nine months, eight and a half months of Russian occupation that they went through. And so on, on this trip, a couple days ago, I had the opportunity to stop and check on them and make sure that, in fact, they had not left. I knew they wouldn't have. <laughs> and, uh, and give him a hug and to say hello. When I talk to friends and relatives about this, that's the thing they're surprised by the most, that life goes on. You know, people get married, people have children, people go to work, people build businesses, people renovate their homes, people have dreams for the future. None of that stops yep. just because there's a war. And I love being able to show that. Yep. We don't always have the time because often our perspective is so focused on, on what happened that day and the people who lost their lives that day and the buildings that were destroyed that day. But I love it when we have the opportunity to show what life is really like in the war zone. Молодец.